I am um, definitely not evil. <laughs> what, what the hell is driving you? Why are you so obsessed by new operation, new creation, new things to do? Yeah, it, uh, crystal meth is the answer. Um, <laughs> if you think Red Bull gives you wings. Um, so, <laughs> man, that, that, that's, that, that quote's going to probably sting. Um, so, um, yeah, just kidding for the record. <laughs> um, so, well, I think there's, it, 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 the companies still have a lot to do for their, their core mission. Um, the, you know, for electric vehicles, sustainable energy, uh, still less than 1% of the global fleet is electric. So you've got about 2 billion cars and trucks on the road, but still uh, less than uh, 20 million are electric at this point. So there's still a long way to go for sustainable energy, for um, sustainable energy generation. So this, you know, the Tesla mission, I think we've, we've made a, a lot of progress, but still um, it's a lot, a lot more ahead. Um, then SpaceX, the goal is, uh, it's, a, it's a big goal, but it's, we, we want to try to uh, make life multiplanetary, to extend life beyond Earth. And um, I think this is, important for a number of reasons, uh, but um, yeah, there's, there's the sort of defensive reason of ensuring that the light of consciousness does not go out. Um, and, and if I, I may, some of these questions, I, if, if I'm going on too long, you feel free to interrupt me, but the... No, no, you can. Okay. You can so, be long. <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, pe people do ask me, you know, uh, have I seen UFOs uh, and aliens and that kind of thing? And um, I haven't. Um, and I think I would have seen them by now. Um, so it, it appears that we might, we might be the only consciousness, uh, at least in this galaxy. And, um, and if so, that's kind of a scary prospect because uh, it, it means that the light of consciousness is like a, like a tiny candle in a vast darkness. And uh, we should do everything we can to prevent that candle from going out. So, yeah. And, and, and so, so some of the things, so that means obviously taking the actions to ensure that Earth is good, that Earth is safe and secure for civilization. Um, and it, I think it also means ex, ex, extending life beyond Earth um, to other planets in the solar system and ultimately to other star systems. Um, and I think that's, that's both a sort of defense of the light of consciousness and also um, I think a point of inspiration because the, the, life cannot just be about solving um, one problem after another. We need things that inspire us. I mean, we need things that you know, move our heart, and that when you wake up in the morning, you're excited to be alive. And being a spacefaring civilization and making true the things that we see in the good science fiction movies. This is one of the things that I think can inspire all of humanity. Just like the, you know, when, when the um, astronauts went to the moon in, in 69, it was something that, I mean, they said for all mankind, you know, and it really was something you say to any human on Earth, what's, the, what is, what's like the most amazing thing that humanity has ever done? A lot of, at least one of those things would be, we went to the moon, you know, and so you want to have these inspiring things that make you excited to be alive and excited about the future. Um, yeah. And you, you had those uh, thoughts and dreams uh, when you were a kid or this came uh, much later on? Well, I didn't think I would be doing these things as a kid. Um, that's for sure. I was interested in technology. And I read a lot of books. Um, so I was obviously interested in science. I mean, this is, not, this is hardly going to be surprising. I was interested in science fiction and technology. You have to tell the truth because there is someone <laughs> yeah. who is listening to you, huh? Yeah, my mom's right there. She can, <laughs> she can call me out on this if it's not, not accurate. But um, So I guess the, the thing that was 
maybe um, most significant from a philosophical standpoint was that uh, when I was about maybe 12 or 13, I had somewhat of an existential crisis where I was like, I was like, what, what is the meaning of life? Is life just meaningless? Why are we here? What does it all mean? And, um, and I read a lot of books on religion and philosophy, and, um, and then ultimately, the, you know, I read this book, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is great. Um, and, and in that book, that book is really a, a, a philosophy book that's disguised as humor. And the point that Douglas Adams makes is that the, the real difficulty is understanding what questions to ask about the answer that is the universe. Um, and that, we, we, that, that really we want to, we want to have, it's, it's, it's essentially, a, it's, it's like a philosophy of curiosity, um, of, of saying, well, what can we do to find out more about the, the nature of the universe and, um, and the meaning of life? And so if, 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 that's, that's the sort of foundational element. And then from there you say, okay, well, if we want to find out the meaning of life, we have to expand the scope and scale of consciousness. We have to go out there and we ex explore the stars to, to know what questions to ask um, about the universe and, and understand the universe. And that's, that's my core philosophy. Um, and, and, and so from that, it was like, well, we have to make sure that uh, Earth is good, so we have to have sustainable energy. Um, we um, we want to build technology to travel beyond Earth. And uh, that's, it's, it's from that sort of core philosophy that these companies uh, arise in, in most cases. Um, you can say, how does Twitter help with that? <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to go back to Earth. Sure. And uh, to the various uh, enterprises that you contributed to create or co-created or created. Let's start with PayPal. Sure. A very impressive company. Do you regret to have sold it? Um, I, I think, in, in retrospect, I think it was it was good to have that that the company was acquired by eBay um, because there was so much talent at PayPal, and that talent subsequently went on to create many other companies. Um, so, uh, YouTube, for example, was created by two people that worked at at PayPal. Um, uh, we had there was uh, LinkedIn was created from from PayPal. There was uh, Yelp. There was uh, m many other companies. Um, impressive, yeah, yeah, very impressive. Yeah. So and then and if if I'd been still working on PayPal, then I, there wouldn't be, you know, t Tesla would not be in its current form, and and SpaceX wouldn't exist. Yes. <laughs> so yes, uh, I guess the sh short answer yes. <laughs> Yeah, short and sorry that, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. But now, with the, you would have loved to keep it again. Well, there is, I think, um, the potential to do something that is um, uh, bigger than PayPal. Um, this is sort of like the X, the sort of everything app kind of thing. So, I, I think it's it's somewhat poetic. Like we're trying to get go, go finish a task that was started about twenty four years ago. Um, I think it's I think we it's going to be useful. X slash Twitter is going to be just a very useful thing, um, and hopefully something that is a positive force for civilization. Uh, moving to Tesla. Um, I have, um, through one of our operations, done the first advertising campaign for the electric car of GM. That was at the end of the 90s. So can okay. you explain why GM and other car manufacturers have not created Tesla and why Tesla is successful? Uh, what is the difference? Um, you're talking about the EV1, basically, the EV1 car that. So, uh, General Motors um, actually did come out with this uh, electric vehicle one, EV1, 
and it's uh, yes, you remember if you want. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, actually, so I, I thought when that it came out, it was ninety-seven. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, I would have. I expected there would be an EV2, EV3, and so forth. And if, if they had done that, actually, there would be no need for Tesla. Um, but um, for reasons that that aren't clear, they GM uh, recalled all of the EV1s, even from customers that really wanted to keep the cars. They recalled the cars and they crushed them in a junkyard. And the, the, it, it, blows, it, it still blows my mind that they did this because the, the, the people who had the EV1s, they loved the car so much, they held a candlelit vigil at the junkyard where the cars were crushed. Okay, like it was, like, like someone was getting killed, <laughs> you know, like, and it's, and it's like, if somebody is holding a candlelit vigil for the because they love your product so much, maybe you should make more of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it's like pretty rare for candlelit vigils to be held for products. So I, I don't understand why they didn't do more. They should have, and they would be the leader in electric vehicles today. But they didn't. They, they didn't. And so there was a need for Tesla because the, you know, at the time of starting Tesla, there were no electric vehicles being made, um, and there were so the big car companies were not making electric vehicles. There were no startups that we were aware of making electric vehicles. So it's like, well, we should try. And um, I mean, in the case of both Tesla and SpaceX, I thought the chance of success was maybe 10%. So I just looked like I thought it would be successful. I thought it would fail. A good lesson. Uh, now moving to the kid's dream, which is to become an astronaut and not to build rockets how you move from the idea that every child has, I would be an astronaut, to I will do reusable rockets. Yeah. Um, you forgot. No, I, the, I'm trying to comp compress the stories so that they're not too long. Um, because the story is actually quite long. Because I didn't start out wanting to do the rockets. I, at first, I was going to do this um, philanthropic mission to Mars called Mars Oasis. And then as I started investigating um, the, what it would take to launch this mission to Mars, just a little greenhouse, basically. Uh, it was intended to inspire the public. And, and I, I started understanding more about the, the, what rockets could be used. Um, I actually went to Russia a few times to um, try to buy some of their nuclear missiles, um, minus the nuclear, minus the nuke. Um, that's extra. Um, so that was pretty wild, being in, in Russia in 2001, uh, negotiating to buy two of their biggest missiles. Um, but 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 it became it became clear that the. Um, Unless there was a, something new with rockets, there were, that, 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 that was the fundamental issue. The cost of access to space was the fundamental issue. So it wasn't, a, it wasn't a question of trying to increase the public's desire. Public's desire for space and exploration is very high. Uh, but there needs to be a, a means. There, there needs to be a way. Um, and uh, there, need, there needs to be a radical improvement in the cost of access to orbit. Um, so. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to try starting a rocket company and see if it's successful. But I, like I said, I, I told people at the time, because people would say to me, just tell me this joke of like, what's the fast, what, you know, what, what's the, you know, how, how, how do you go from, uh, <clears throat> sorry. Um, it, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting a, a little hot under the collar here. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of people are. Um, so. Uh, they would say, what, what's the fastest way to make a, a small fortune in the rocket industry? And the, and the punchline is, you start with a large one. So, you know, it was, it was uh, tough going for a while. Our first three launches failed. Fortunately, the fourth one succeeded. If the fourth one had not succeeded, uh, SpaceX would not exist. So it was a very close call. Fast forward. You created... Uh or you co-created OpenAI. Yes. Uh, ChatGPT 
has been incredibly success, incredibly successful. It's uh, the, the the fastest growing ever story. And uh, after having created OpenAI, suddenly you say, oh, "Oh, we should have a pause." Some people say, "Oh, it's because he has not done it." Well, I, I mean, I didn't think anyone would actually agree to the pause. Um, but I thought, just for the, for the record, I just want to say, I think we should pause. Um, I didn't think that, uh, anyway, that the... Why do you want to should pause? Well, I think th there's, there's a real danger for digital superintelligence uh, having negative consequences. And so if we are not careful with creating artificial general intelligence, uh, we could have potentially a catastrophic outcome. So, no, I think there's a range of possibilities. I think the most likely outcome is positive for AI. But, it, but that's not every possible outcome. So we, we need to minimize the probability that something will go wrong with um, digital superintelligence. Um, yes. Um, so I'm in favor of AI regulation because I think advanced AI is a risk to the public and anything that's risk to the public, there needs to be some kind of referee. That referee is the regulator. And so I think that, uh, that my strong recommendation is to have some regulation for AI. Some regulation for AI? Yes. Which is what you want also for Twitter? Um, not sure. Regulation, I guess. There's plenty of, plenty of regulators. Sure. OK. Uh, so speaking about Twitter, uh, you, you have uh, made a big bet yeah. uh, on Twitter. You said it a few minutes ago that you paid too much. Yes. Yes. Uh, and um, you are now going on to Twitter 2.0 mm -hmm. or 3.0, uh, which I understand it's a full-scale reinvention of the company. Uh, yeah, we're, we're so, evolving uh, the company very rapidly. Yeah, the, the company is changing quite dramatically. There are a lot of uh, controversy uh, about uh, Twitter. So I, I have, uh, in fact, three very quick questions. The first one is, why have you decided to acquire it? The second is, uh, what was wrong at Twitter to make you acting? And the last one, is um, not, not the last, last of the three, because there are many other questions, is why do you believe that you would be successful? And you will be. Huh, well, thanks. Um, I, can imagine, I can't imagine that you are, will not be. Well, thanks. Um, so, well, obviously I was <clears throat> on Twitter as a, as a major user, and uh, even before the acquisition, um, closed, my, my Twitter account was the most interacted with account in the world. So my, I guess I'll be, I'm pretty f closely attuned to what's going on with Twitter. You know, I, I get a feel for how is it shifting one way or the other. And uh, generally I was concerned that Twitter was having a negative effect on civilization, that it was having a corrosive effect on civil society. And, um, and so you know, anything that undermines uh, civilization, I think, is not good. And, you know, go back to my point of, like, we need to do everything possible to support civilization and move it in a positive direction. And, um, and I felt that, it would, that Twitter was, kept moving more and more in a negative direction. And my hope and aspiration was to change that um, and have it be a positive force for civilization. It is not perceived like this. Uh, people are very happy to listen to that uh, approach, but it, it, the perception is very different. Well, I think it depends on, I mean, I think if, if somebody is a regular Twitter user, I think they, most people would say that the, their experience has improved. Um, we've we've uh, gotten rid of 90% um, uh, of the bots and the scams and, and, and the various bad things that were happening. Um, We've, uh, 
gotten rid of now at this point, I think 95% of the child exploitation material that was on Twitter, which was a shock to see the, the amount of that. That was really terrible. Uh, some of that uh, had been going on for 10 years and no action. So uh, I think we've done a lot of good on that respect. Um, and um, and then I think we, you know, we've also done things like we, we have open sourced the algorithm. So we're trying to be as transparent as possible. So Twitter is the only social media company where you can see the actual code of the algorithm. So it's not like some secret black box. Um, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the way to build trust is, the way to build trust is not take my word for it, it's let's, let's show you exactly how it works and full transparency. Um, and, um, and, and we're also going to be showing, like, if, if your account is in any way affected by the Twitter system, you can see it clearly. Um, and uh, just, you know, moving in, a, a, I think, a good direction. Um, we've, I think the recommendation algorithm, you know, I, I don't want to go on too long for Twitter, but I think it's, I, I think it's actually uh, quite good and that those who are, on the, who are on the Twitter system, I think generally think it's good. Um, the, you know, we are seeing all-time highs in, in usage. So at least, you know, for the public out there, they are using the system more. Um, so we're seeing you know, pretty significant week-over-week -week growth in, in usage. Um, so, the, you know, the public is speaking with their time, and if they're, if they're putting their time on, on Twitter, that's a very good signal. Um, so that's, that's, that's very positive. Um, what what yeah. would you say to advertisers who left Twitter uh, to convince them to come back? Yeah, I, I, actually, I should say that um, maybe with a few exceptions, um, almost all the advertisers have said that they're, they've either come back or they said they will come back. So actually, uh, I feel pretty pretty optimistic about the future. Um, and um, yeah, so it, it, you know, we're really at this point. I believe uh, actually, I'm not aware of any advertiser that is. Uh, that either, they've either come back or they said they will come back. I'm not aware of any exceptions. There are probably a few exceptions, but overall, I think it's uh, it's very positive.